Hi there. Whether you're a sensitive introvert or just another person who has their own business, I'm guessing you may be familiar with this term, even if you've not heard it, but you might have felt it. Productivity shame. Do you know what that is? And maybe even just thinking about that term, you can have an idea. So I want to talk about that a little bit today and maybe we'll do a round of tapping or so on this. I'm going to share my screen because there's a piece of this I really want you to see. It's a, it's a lovely quote by an author and podcast host called Jocelyn G. Jocelyn K. Glee or Glay, and she's the host of, host of the podcast Hurry Slowly. And she said it this way, productivity shame is the act of setting utterly unrealistic goals or schedules for yourself and then beating yourself up when you fail to meet them. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Everybody who has a business can probably identify with this and I guess actually maybe the rest of the, the population as well, even if you don't have a business. But I think especially for sensitive ones and for introverts who spend a lot of time in their head who care about relationships and those around them, who care about the people that they serve and want to do the best for them, there can be this absolute huge inner pressure to get as much done as we possibly can so that we can serve the people, so that we meet deadlines, so that we seem responsible. And it can be this absolute never-ending, unrealistic chase to get the list done. And it is just not a sustainable way to live. Now, <laughs> it's okay to say, well, just drop the guilt, just just accept that that is all sort of, that's how it works. We'll never get everything done and just accept it. But for many sensitive introverts, they have a very strong and active and real emotional life. And it's the emotions that drive the behavior. So if we keep listening to the emotions, we will keep doing that thing, the inner pressure to uh, meet all the needs around us. And therefore, I absolutely strongly believe it is first the emotions that we need to address before we can say glibly things like, just stop that. That never works, right? So let's do a little bit of tapping. Tune into how you feel about your to-do list. Just think back to that quote. Do you set yourself utterly unrealistic schedules and then beat yourself up for not being able to meet that? Think for a moment about that utterly unrealistic part and the shame and the guilt and the disappointment and all the things that it may bring up if you don't finish all these things. I do the same all the time. I schedule five or ten things a day for myself. And then at the end of the day, I feel miserable because I didn't get to meet all of that. It's ridiculous. It's like saying this egg should be able to boil in two minutes. And it should be a hard boiled egg after two minutes and then feeling disappointed when it takes ten minutes to do that. It's just a ridiculous expectation. So <laughs> let's work with that a little bit. So join me in some tapping, remembering to take responsibility for your own well-being. If strong, just start tapping with me. If strong feelings start surfacing, just keep the tapping going. Or if it feels unmanageable to you, please make sure you get the help you need from somebody who can assist you in a private session. Even though I set unrealistic schedules and goals, to-do list goals for myself. And then I beat myself up. If I don't meet them, I soothe and comfort myself. Even if I do this thing where I set myself unrealistic goals and then I make myself feel bad because I didn't meet them, I soothe and comfort myself. Even though I do this really crazy thing where I expect myself to do the job of three people in one day, and then I beat myself up because I'm only one person. I soothe and comfort myself. And then we just tap through all the points. All this craziness that we do with our to-do list. I beat myself up.
because I don't get it all done in one day. And the thing is, what I expect myself to do is more than the time actually allows. And then I feel bad at the end of the day because I didn't meet my own unrealistic expectations. All this guilt, I'm tapping under the arm right now, all this guilt. I'm feeling so guilty because I don't meet my own unrealistic expectations. And you'll notice I'm trying to bring in a little bit of humor because if we can see it for what it really is with a bit of humor, we may be able to do this a little bit differently with, with a bit more awareness. So I'm doing all the finger points as well because I find it's such a useful thing to be able to do. You can do it under the desk. Nobody will see you if you're busy dealing with something difficult. All these unrealistic expectations that I make myself adhere to and then I feel bad when I don't, when I can't meet all of them. And darn it, I want to stop it. But it's hard to stop. Because the world seems to expect that of us. The world seems to think, our culture seems to think, that it's so wonderful to be busy and to get so many things done. And the truth is, I'm an introvert. I need lots of downtime. I'm a sensitive introvert. My nervous system does need more time to process things, to recharge, to let go of all that stimulation. The truth is also, I do feel good when I accomplish a lot of things. It does give me a great sense of satisfaction. I feel accomplished. I do love getting a lot done. On the Strengths Finder, maybe you know the Strengths Finder, Clifton Strengths Assessment. There's a talent called Achiever, and they love to tick things off the box. Tick, tick, tick. And that's what I love doing. Maybe you do too. So the achiever part inside of me really loves to tick off all those things and feel very good and very accomplished when I've done all of that. And again, bringing on the opposite side. Again, it's true. It's also true that that can lead to overwork and overdoing and setting unrealistic expectations for myself. And then making myself feel bad, guilty, disappointed, all of those things, ashamed, embarrassed, because I didn't get done what I said I would. And when I don't do what I said I would, there's a little part of me that feels I'm not in integrity. And that can lead to feeling ashamed and guilty as well. So all of these conflicting thoughts and feelings about productivity, being a sensitive person and running my own business. Let's just take a nice deep breath in there. So a nice deep breath in. <sighs> just notice how you feel. Think about your large unrealistic schedule and expectations on yourself. This bit of tapping may not have cleared all of the feelings about it and all of the unrealistic expectations, but maybe it brought some awareness. And that's all we can hope to do on a good day is we can bring more awareness to our actions, to our behaviors, to our thoughts and our feelings. And our biggest patterns, the ones that we've been running for years and years, whether they are productive or unproductive, they take a lot of conscious effort to start changing. So if you regularly fall into this thing of setting yourself unrealistic expectations and then beating yourself up for not doing them, I want to encourage you to just keep bringing awareness to it, to just start noticing when you do it, taking a step back, taking a few deep breaths in and 
maybe softening around the edges and letting himself know that the world is not going <laughs> to stop turning. The sky is not going to fall if that list doesn't get completed. Maybe start bringing awareness to where you can set a little bit uh, kinder sort of expectations on yourself and letting people know that you're an introvert um, in business and you work for yourself and you don't have a large team and you may get things done a little bit slower than those who have a team on their side. Keep tapping as well. I want to let you know that um, I absolutely advocate using EFT tapping regularly for anybody who has a business because there's so much that comes up that we need to deal with on an emotional level. And I also encourage uh, sensitive introverts to tap into their strengths. Not only does it work to help or to, to use EFT to remove the blocks and the, the, the emotional things that stand in our way, but to really become aware of the strengths that you have and to make the most of them and tap into um, other people around you, things that you can use that can help you support your weaknesses. So that is my message for you today. I hope you enjoyed the tapping and I would love to see you soon again on another video.